<laughs> I think we're up. Cool, we're up. Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. We're gonna continue with the trial. Whee! Doo -ba -doo -ba -ba -doo. 23rd October. I can't believe it's been six months since I was last allowed to work in court. And now, here I am, back at the old Bailey. Ah, Mr. Navajo. Good morning, Professor Hairbrain. I, I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. The atmosphere of pressure here, in here is off the charts. I've never felt anything like it. It's, it's crushing me. I feel it every time I'm here. That gravity. Well, this is Britain's highest court. Are you telling me it's fitted with some kind of device that can actually control air pressure? I think it's probably all in the mind. Ah, yes, well, you won't let me down, will you, Mr. Nadoro? I'm counting on you in today's trial. To save my life! To save the secret of my super high voltage instantaneous kinesis machine from being made public! Yes, I understand. I know what I have to do. I have to establish that the explosion two days ago was nothing more than an unfortunate accident. Well, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about, really. Justice will prevail. My commiserations, Mr. Naruhodo. You appear to have been lumbered with a most tiresome case here. Oh, it's Sholmes. Mr. Sholmes, I didn't expect to see you here. That was very mean, Bruno. Leaving me all alone at home with Hurley. It took me at least an hour to wake him. Ah, uh, oh, ah, uh, is it... Are you... Herlock Sholmes! Indeed, sir. I am he. Herlock Sholmes. Oh, I heard all about your exploits even whilst living in Germany. Ah, oh, yes. Rand's magazine is on sale in Germany, too. This month's installment was sublime. Your deduction in the adventure of the Silver Blaze was wonderful. Ah, oh, yes. A memorable case, indeed. It concerned the snake, I seem to recall. Was the Silver Blaze the snake one? No, that's the speckled band. No, that was the speckled band. Well, thank you for coming. I do appreciate your support. I'm sorry to disappoint you, my dear fellow, but I'm afraid I can't stay. Oh, I've urgent business at Madame Tuspel's. You mean your waxwork job? No, no, the waxwork abduction, of course. Madame has engaged my services. Ah, so you're trying to get to the bottom of that ransom note, are you? Hey, Real, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy... What day is it today? Happy Tuesday! Hope you had a good weekend! The week's wages depend on it, as does the safe return of the waxwork, naturally. As such, I intend to give it my undivided attention. Oh, well, never mind then. I understand. Of course, with my skills of observation and reasoning, resolving the matter will be an as easy as proverbial pie. I shall return forthwith. For until I solve the case, I shall have no money to afford a pie of any description. Ooh. And you must absolutely give it your full attention, Hurley. I can never get Iris's voice down right. I feel like it changes all the time. Oh, I'm sad. I met this girl, and we talked for a bit, and I thought she liked me. But what happens? What happens? <laughs> quite, Iris, quite. But life is riddled with irony, you know. Whenever I give something my full attention, I have a quite insatiable desire for a pie. One of the universe's intractable mysteries, you might say. We're wearing masks and wasn't sure how I looked. I sent her a photo and she ghosted me. That's not cool. That's mean. Boo. I mean, if you were talking and you got along all right, that's a good sign. Like, uh, it's hard to find people that you can talk with and have a good time with. Boo. I'm sorry that happened to you, dude. Oh, yes, quite. Definitely. Absolutely. I totally understand. Is someone a little starstruck? I wish you the very best of luck, Professor Hairbrain. Oh, ah, uh, ooh, why, thank you. Before I depart, Mr. Nadahodo, a word in your ear, if you please. What's this about? As you have remarkably little grounding in science, I feel I ought to inform you. As compelling as this super-high-voltage instantaneous kinesis hypothesis may be, a 
practical implementation such as was attempted by the professor at the Great Exhibition is quite impossible. But the professor said the demonstration was a success. Ah, success. Yes, it would appear that he fervently believes it was. I've read Professor Bunnybrain's paper about it too, you know, and I have to say... I'm sure it can't be done. It could barely be done theoretically, let alone practically. So he's completely barking up the wrong tree. But how could an experiment that had no possibility of succeeding in fact succeed? That's contradictory. And it's that contradiction that will be at the heart of the trial, I have no doubt. What's that supposed to mean? Now, I must hurry along. I wish you the best of luck, my dear fellow. See you later, Hurley! Hey Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Tuesday! Hope you had a good weekend. This is why I have self-esteem issues, because Smoothie is here and won't even give me the time of day. He said hello to all of us! Well, it looks like you're on your own today, Runo, but chin up, you can do it. Oh, what about you, Iris? Ah, no, I'm afraid I can't help. I have something I need to do. I see. <laughs> it's going to be a big surprise for you. When you find out what it is... Uh, that sounds ominous. Counsel for the defense and the defendant. Court is about to be in session. Make your way into the courtroom at once. We're on our way. You look bright and nice today. Hey Kirby, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. I just took a shower. So that's why I'm all like shiny. <laughs> An experiment that the laws of science can't possibly succeed. That says can't possibly succeed. And a scientist who's cons convinced that it did. I got so tired all of a sudden. That's the riddle you have to unlock here, Junosuke. That's the key to this case. Boop, 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 boop. Shiny toast. I'm shiny toast is like the display toast that restaurants have. To be like, this is what this toast looks like. Whoa, the jurors are different. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. We are sitting today for the public trial of Professor Albert Herbrain. I now call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is ready. The defense is... The defense is ready, my lord. I'm six months out of practice, and what's more... I thought she was there for a second. I'm without Susatasan today. Ugh. Is it just my imagination, or does the air in here feel even more oppressive than usual? So, I must say I recollect the victim of this case all too well, Mr. Udi Osman. Mr. Osman was well known as a financier, though that was merely a front for his diverse criminal activities. It was only a month ago that the man appeared in court prosecuted by you, Lord Van Zeeks, but the jury unanimously found him not guilty. Because every member of the jury had been bribed by the sound of it. These powerful London criminals are prepared to go to extreme lengths to keep their freedom. But two days ago, on 21st October, Mr. Asman met his end. The work of the Reaper, was it? If that is how your lordship would describe divine retribution. But the fact remains that Mr. Asman's death was a direct result of the actions of the accused, Professor Hairbrain. Very well then. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have been selected at random to represent the will of the people. Have they really been random, though? <sighs> Are the six of you ready to fulfill your societal duty? I'm most gratified to have been selected to carry out this important civic duty, my lord. Ooh, she's pretty. So if a man's fate in the palm of one's hand, oh gosh, oh golly, it sends shivers down my spine. Science experiments, magic conjuring tricks, courtroom trials, all are nothing more than performances. Any spirit scholar that defiles the reputation of science deserves to hang. Um, you have to listen to what's there on both sides of the fence, and um, they said I won. That's it, isn't it? Blech. Was it like this, my day? Was it like this at all? That's... that's... The police killer Ottermo look-alike. Again. And he's as exhausted as ever, it seems. 
Now, as I'm sure you are all aware, the incident we are here to judge today tragically took place at the Great Exhibition shortly after its opening. But the death toll could have been far worse. With the exception of the victim, no one was killed. Nevertheless, the dream of science being exhibited rapidly turned into a nightmare for the spectators. A tragic turn of events, and as such, the eyes of all London know that the whole world will be on this trial. It is our duty to reach a swift and just conclusion, I feel. So, your opening statement please, Lord Vanzix. At the heart of this incident is technology never before demonstrated anywhere in the world. One of science's latest developments, I take it. The government is keen to capitalize on the Great Exhibition to improve Britain's technological advantage. The technology being demonstrated by the accused was described as super high voltage blah 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 blah. <laughs> How are you, Regal? Very sad. Other than that, okay, I'm sorry you're sad. Mm, I'm sorry you're sad! Sadness sucks! <laughs> Good lord. It's designed to disassemble human subjects using extremely high voltage electricity and beam them instantaneously to another location where they are subsequently reassembled. Is, is such a thing even within the realms of possibility? I already forgot the voice I gave him. Well, I don't believe it, that's for sure. Disassembling people with electricity? My goodness, how shocking. Yeah, the whole idea is absurd. Hypothesis will never stand up to scrutiny. Sir, I believe you're a fellow of the Royal Society, are you not? An expert in your field. I am, and my word on the matter can be considered final. Instantaneous kinesis is poppycock. So this expert and Mr. Schulz are in agreement. It's impossible. What is the prosecution's view on the matter? Oh, I skipped it. Whoops. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Success? The prosecution would assert it was a success. Something corny about that your ha 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 cause she's eating corn. It's okay, I'm just gonna play hentai games and swear off women. They can't be trusted. Oh my gosh! But why hentai games? I guess typical um, visual novel dating sims don't really go for the women, huh? Yeah, I guess if you want a whole harem of women to be able to date, you could always play Doki Doki! <laughs> Doki Doki Literature Club! Order! The professor's hypothesis is currently under investigation by the British government. If it is deemed to have merit, a substantial research grant would have been made available. The accused made use of the invention built on his new hypothesis to take Mr. Aslan's life. In order to be the sole benefactor of the grant. But, but... This disastrous demonstration was no accident. It was carefully designed from the outset to end the life of the victim. No... I don't think Hairbrain would have that kind of motive. Thank you, Lord Van Zeeks. The prosecution's stance is clear. But you will now bring forth witnesses to substantiate your claims. Gladly, my lord. Bailiff, show the first witnesses to the stand. Hairbrain and Gregson. Hairbrain can't be a witness because he's the he's the defendant. Witnesses, state your names and occupations for the court. Yes, sir. Tobias Gregson, Detective Inspector at Scotland Yard's Homicide Division. I was on duty at the demonstration on the day in question and in charge of, following of the following investigation. Albert Hairbrain, scientist. You were born in England but have been carrying out research in Germany in recent years, correct? Yes, yes, that's right. After graduating from university here in Britain, I went to work in Germany and made an amazing discovery. Which is what brought me back. I had to demonstrate my incredible hypothesis at the Great Exhibition. But you demonstrated was incredible, all right? An incredible explosion. But the science, the science was a success. The institute would have all worked. Everyone saw it. They must have done. Yes, it was a terrible accident, but... 
demonstration of my hypothesis was a success. Well, that much is undeniable, as shown in this photograph taken by the forensic investigation team. This was taken inside the Crystal Tower, I take it. The centerpiece of the exhibition, no less. So, it looks like he got stabbed in the heart? Hmm. That's right, my lord. Seems the victim rammed straight into it. But the rest of his body is too clean. Hmm. I see. Very well, submitted the photograph as evidence. Photograph has been added as evidence. As the course heard, the victim of the incident was Mr. Odiasman. There have been a number of allegations made against the man, but putting them aside for the time being, it was a man who financed the research for the experiment and the demonstration itself. I see. So to summarize the situation, the defendant is accused of taking the life of the man who funded his work. Would that be correct? Exactly. But couldn't it be... That the explosion was caused by some malfunction in the apparatus used for the demonstration? That's right! That must be it! My splendid machine! My poor splendid machine! You saw it yesterday, didn't you? Can't even examine the wreckage thanks to the Special Dispensation for... For Scientific Equipment Act. What? The wreckage! The wreckage! With that being the case, how can the facts be established? How can it be possibly to be determined whether this was an accident or deliberate and mali or a deliberate and malicious act? I can read. Extremely simply, my lord. I beg your pardon. Isn't that the right witness? What sorry, me? No, your neighbor. There's a new FF14 quest called Do It for the Vine. Is it a new um What's it called? Not a main story quest, but like a event quest? Like, duh, it's an event. But like a timed seasonal- SEASONAL EVENTS! That's what I meant. I should check it out. Yes sir, it was murder, plain and simple. Anyone could state with that with complete certainty. What? How can you possibly think that? Thank you, Inspector. I think we had better proceed to formal testimony. You will explain to the court on what grounds you claim this experiment to have been a front for murder. Murder most foul. The corpse that went crashing through the crystal tower had a broken neck. I, I made a minor miscalculation in the angle of the beam projection, that's all. That was my mistake. But the post-mortem examination revealed another injury, a fatal wound. Whoops, be right back. Back. Don't swear off women, you're still young. Me, I'm outdated, you still got many possibilities. You're you're only outdated if you're dead. Until you die, you have all the chances to meet all the peoples. Don't give up. Audrey Hepburn found her her person, her man, when she was in her fifties. So don't give up. You still have a lot of years left. Uh, but yeah, fatal wound. There was a lesion in his chest where he clearly been stabbed by something sharp right in the heart. So the victim was killed before he went anywhere, and this fellow's the only one who could have done it. Hmm. Or there could have been someone waiting in the tower. An extraordinary business. 
In addition to suffering a broken neck, the victim was stabbed in the heart. Information I would really like to have heard from someone other than the judge. The coroner says death would have been all but instant from a wound like that. You could say, in fact, that the victim was killed twice by the accused. No, no, and no! That couldn't be further from the truth! I have the experiment plan document that was submitted to the security team. The victim stood himself inside something called the birdcage, ready to be beamed instantly. To the second level of the crystal tower, about 25 yards away. The experiment did not go according to plan, however. As the machine was put into operation, there was a large explosion. The blast caused the beam transmitter to point higher than the intended, than intended. Accordingly, the kinesis resulted in the birdcage materializing in mid-air, from where it subsequently fell, crashing through the glass of the crystal tower's large round window. My word! One assumes the victim's neck was broken upon impact with the tower then. I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for this to happen. The machine was just too powerful. But honestly, really, I swear, it was just an accident. A terrible accident. Unfortunately, that excuse can't save you. No, not considering the shot murder weapon that pierced the victim's heart. But the murder weapon did not have any blood on it. So... <laughs> murder weapon? What are you saying? This is the autopsy report submitted by the coroner. Lavos did it? Lavos like Corona Sugar? <laughs> That's a different game, dude. The prosecution would like it entered into the court record. The request is granted, counsel. Why don't they ever submit these before the trial starts so I can see how everyone died? I was there in person, you know. I saw the whole ludicrous performance. And the only other person on the stage with Mr. Rasmus was that disgraceful excuse of a scientist. Then really, by all accounts, it must have been him. Hmm, hard to think of otherwise, really. I don't remember his voice, and it's going to always change. But well, counsel for the defense, proceed with the cross-examination, please. Oh, yes, my lord. I need to focus here. It's been a while. It's been a while since I could. But before I do that, I look at all the evidence. Diagram. Okay, nothing to zoom in on. Uh, examine. Oops, nothing. Uh, uh. It looks like layers of thick canvas with a thick rubber lining of sorts. I've never seen anything like it before, but applying Mr. Sholmes' methods, you might do so as part of a raincoat worn by someone who really, really didn't want to get wet. And the charring must have occurred when the person was struck by lightning. Or maybe not. Oh, <laughs> you know, get There was no lightning. Mm -hmm. Nothing to note here? I guess not. I guess I need to wait for an assistant to talk this over with. Okay, examine. That's just him. With a bloody heart. Okay, 47. Da, da, da. Coroner, Courtney Scythe. Wow. Uh, cause of death. Hemorrhage of a wound to the chest that pierced the heart inflicted by a sharp implement. Additional observations, a broken vertebra most likely resulting from impact after a sudden fall from considerable height. So the cause of death was not his broken neck, it was the wound in the heart. The corpse on crash and had a broken neck. Are you suggesting that because he fell from a considerable height? Exactly, which highlights something else about this whole drum business. What's that? The fact that the instantaneous kinesis itself was a success. Ah! A 
after the explosion, the cage with the fellow inside suddenly appeared out of nowhere in midair. So although the experiment ended in a disaster, the so-called instantaneous kinesis did actually occur. Remind us, Professor, what was the cause of the fatal disaster? Miscalculation. That's happened twice now, by the way. Uh. That means they're not the person for you. It might suck in the moment, but one day you'll find someone. Cause like, I don't know how it is for other girls, but I will say if I just, like, this is me personally. If I meet someone off the street, but I don't really know them that well, but they're like, hey, I want to go out with you. Then I'm just like, no, thank you. Cause I still feel uncomfortable, but there might be more like forward outgoing people that's okay with it. But like, I feel like most people would be like, let me talk to you more before you ask me out. So maybe take that approach, like um, get to know them more as a friend before you ask them out. Yeah, if someone, if I just like met someone once and they asked me out, I would, I would be like, I don't know if I can trust you. Oh man, I got... It's getting really hot in my room, it's making me so sleepy. Ugh. So the angle of projection is critical, is it? And you calculated it yourself, personally? Absolutely, the calculation is far too complicated for anyone but me to carry out. Oh, Link, you got it wrong, didn't you? Yes, that's right, that's the point. The calculation is so complicated, even I can make a mistake. Do people fall for that brazen confidence? I should try it. I I take into account the subject's height and weight, the room direction, the ambient temperature. I considered every possible variable, so I just don't understand how this could have happened. Obviously, you had to include the weight of the clothes Mr. Asma was wearing at the time, I suppose. Ah! Crackling comets! The answer should have been three! So much for safety first. Three must be for a safety third. What? I didn't get that, but whatever. Post mortem was blah 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 blah. A fatal wound. Another fatal injury, you say? That doesn't make any sense. I didn't think I'd have to spell it out, but here we go. Just because there are two fatal wounds doesn't mean I'm saying the victim had two lives to lose, does it? Two, right? Obviously, at first we thought the bloke had died due to his spine snapping in half as well. But you're saying that's not the case. You'll get your answer once I finish my fish and chips, if you don't keep buttoning in every few seconds. But we all know that's a bottomless bag. The victim plummeted 30 feet into a glass tower. It would be reasonable to assume that that's the cause of death. Right, that's what we all thought, but it was a red herring, wasn't it? There was leave it out there. The defense knew nothing of this crucial information. The prosecution received this report from the Fernandez investigation team only this morning. That was the first we knew of it as well. I can only apologize for the impossibility of informing the defense. Sarcastic and insincere? Thanks. So what was the nature of the sharp object? Among the accused's tools that were in use at the demonstration, one, of his, one is of particular interest. This. Ah, oh, yes, that would appear to be some kind of screwdriver, wouldn't it, Count? Aha! There he is! My trusty little companion, Andrew! Andrew? Of course. Ah, oh, do you know each other already? He's one of my dear friends, like all my tools. I'm getting more, you know? We're on one big happy family. Andrew's my flathead screwdriver, of course. His brother, Michael, is a crosshead. Well, it would appear that your beloved Andrew has a red stain on his shank. Ah, yeah, that... that isn't... It's blood, beyond all reasonable doubts. No! And that's not all. The long, sharp shape of this Andrew fellow is completely consistent with the victim's wound. What? What? If train A is going 250 miles 
uh, miles per hour east and train B is going 500 miles per hour west. What the hell is wrong with the drivers and why are they going that fast? <laughs> You're... Hey, Alex, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. Your questions remind me of, um, uh, whatchamacallit. There's a show on Netflix called Magic for Humans, and there's a segment that a magician does that's called Trick Questions. And he's like, look at this trick, and I'm going to ask you a question. So he shows them a magic trick, and you think that the question is going to be regarding that magic trick. But it's all nonsense questions like... If your head was a Pez dispenser and your legs were red vines, um, like how long would it take you to reach the bus or something? Or, or just like really random questions like that. And that's what your questions feel like. And it's funny. <laughs> Cole's brass is trending. Why? If you play Train Simulator, it hard. I never played any simulation game. I wish I didn't click that. I'm not going to click it then. Ooh. -ooh. That's how you get people thinking. Yeah, because they're just like, huh? What? <laughs> like one of uh, one of the magician's question, random questions was, um, why didn't Harry Potter spare Gollum's life? And it's just like, huh? <laughs> they're not even in the same franchise. But silly questions like that, I think, are are fun. Play tunic. What's tunic? The court will enter this friend of the defendant as evidence. The screwdriver has been entered into court record. So one of Professor Hairbrain's tools is the murder weapon. Let's examine it now. No! Back, back, I say. Mm -mm -mm. This is blood. Mr. Asmus, no doubt. This is the problem with looking at murder weapons. What? What's the problem? The blood? I've seen this unusually shaped handle before. It's the same screwdriver that was lodged in the grill on the floor of the kinesis machine, which could be important information, so I should definitely make a note of it. Yay! That's gonna come into play. And okay, nothing else to inspect. That's a crossover I kind of want to see Harry Potter and Lord of the Ring. It's like, who would win? The magic teenagers or... Or Aragorn. <laughs> I feel like... Hmm. But then they got Gandalf. And especially if he's Gandalf the White, I feel like the kids have no chance. But who knows? You'll probably love that game. It has a cute fox character. Ooh. I like cute characters. Great. Gandalf vs. Dumbledore. Wasn't there a... Epic rap battle? Between Gandalf and Dumbledore? The victim was killed before he went anywhere, and this fell's the only one that could have done it. Custis. In my heart, between Gandalf and Dumbledore, I feel like Gandalf would win. I feel like Gandalf has lived longer and he has more wisdom. I mean, Dumbledore is more tricky, but I feel like Gandalf's magic is is stronger? I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, get off. Snape versus Gollum. Gollum! I feel like Gollum would like not really feel pain and he'd just like run towards Snape and like bite his face off. <laughs> Nothing that would cancel Cole, by the way. He just has a selfie where he's shown his- Okay, not gonna look at it. Mm -mm, no, thank you. <laughs> what grounds do you have for saying that? Ha, huh, do you really need to ask? There were only two people on that public experimentation stage in front of the whole crowd. The victim, Mr. Odi Asman, and the accused, Professor Hairbrain. And we know for certain that before the experiment, the victim was alive. That's right, I saw him with my own eyes. Furthermore, following the explosion and kinesis, nobody went anywhere near the body. In other words, only someone else on stage could possibly have done it. What are you doing? <laughs> Professor Hairbrain, do you have some information that may be relevant here? Professor! Ah, sorry, sorry! I was just calculating the optimal coefficient of electrolysis to separate molecules in the human body. And the witness stand is the best place for that. It seemed as though you might have something to say? 
about Inspector Gregson's last remark. Ah! Ha 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 ha! Yes! Yes, that's right! Of course! He just said that nobody else could have done it, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. Who else could have stopped the victim, eh? I don't know. What? There's no way that I could possibly have stabbed Mr. Asman, as you say. Eh? Explain, please, Professor. Of course, this cold-hearted policeman may not be aware, I suppose. But humans are warm-blooded mammals with blood running continuously through their veins. I had heard. Then surely you see. If I plunged something the size of Andrew into the man's chest, the whole stage would have been a bloodbath. No, a blood swimming pool. Ah. But thousands of Londoners were watching me at the time. And yet not one of them claims to have seen a swimming pool of blood. Well, no, I suppose not. You see, not one. Hmm. True, I didn't see anything like that. Well done, Professor. That was a great counter argument. Uh, Voldemort versus Sauron? I suck at typing, sorry. It's okay, we all do that. Voldemort versus Sauron? I feel like Sauron. Because Sauron actually created the Ring of Power. While Voldemort's like, I'm going to stay alive, I'm going to split my soul into seven pieces. But Sauron, like, he stayed alive. For thousands of years. Even without the Ring of Power. And like, Sauron was able to amass a whole freaking army without a body. So it's like, yeah, Sauron, definitely. Hold on! Pray forgive the discourtesy if I save or draw from my hollow chalice to accompany my old friend's adducing. Here's to you, Albert. Oh, you're too kind, Bark, but I'm not really a patch on you. No, you're not. No? Why did you throw it? You've neglected to mention one crucial possibility. I have? A particular situation in which very little bleeding would result from a stab wound. What Uh, be right back again. Sorry.
Back again. Sorry, I had to help my dad with some electrical stuff. Uh, who takes on Bilbo, Harry or Neville Longbottom? Let's see. Neville takes on Bilbo and Harry takes on Frodo. <laughs> Hello, mysterious person in the background. Who are you, who are you talking about? Ah, oh, of course. Inspector, enlighten the court, please. Yes, sir. Where are they going with this? Very well, you will mend your formal testimony now, Inspector Gregson. The weapon left in the body. Nope. Nope, it wasn't left in the body because I saw it. I saw it on the machine. You say that while the weapon remains in the body, there's very little bleeding. Is that unequivocal? Look, there was no blood on the experimentation stage, even though there were, that's where the fellow was stabbed. The only explanation for that is that if the screwdriver was still in his body, stopping any heavy, heavy bleeding. It's common medical knowledge, my learned friend, even on your side of the world. Yes, but about the screwdriver. The thing is, we actually saw it at the scene ourselves, on the experimentation stage. What? It was on the floor by the wreckage of the machine, poking through a metal grill. I went to pick it up, but the detective here stopped me. Isn't that right, Inspector Gregson? Oh, uh, well, um, now you come to mention it, yes. Inspector, are we to understand that you permitted the defense counsel to investigate? That you contravened the Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act. Eh, no, not at all. I, I wouldn't do that. I just let him look, nothing more. I was very clear he wasn't to touch a thing. I love the world of Harry Potter so much, the problem is abs how absolutely boring the setting of the school is. The setting of the school? Like, where the school is located? Because I don't think it's boring. I feel like... The school needs to be in like a secluded place where the kids can practice their magic. But yes, like thinking about like how magic works in their world, like and the, all the different schools that the kids could attend, and like all the areas of magic you can study, it is very interesting. Yes, that's true. This screwdriver was in plain sight on the stage, but it shouldn't have been, should it? Well, what are you getting at? If this tool had been still been in the victim's body when the victim was beamed away by the machine, then it shouldn't have been s still been on stage. But our lie can read. Ah, oh. that's right. It should have been beamed across the crystal tower along with Mr. Asman, and been found still lodged in the victim's chest. Oh, uh, that's why I'm I'm thinking that it was a wax model. That got into the cage? And then his actual real body was in the crystal tower? But anyway, I don't know. How to explain this, Inspector? I... I will, um... I don't... It looks as though everything that the victim had on his person moved with him when he was beamed. If the screwdriver was still in his chest when the instantaneous kinesis occurred. Obviously, that should have been beamed to the destination as well. You. This is a strange situation. Even though people are saying that this instantaneous kinesis is a scientific impossibility, we're still basing arguments on the assumption that it actually did take place. Alright, time to tighten the screws here. My lord, if the prosecution is unable to explain this inconsistency in its arguments, we can only conclude that the testimony given in support cannot be relied upon. Lord Van Zeeks is stumped. <laughs> Albert, what are you doing? Uh, I think multiple movies taking place in a movie 
uh, is really boring. I get for the first couple of movies, but there's been like 10. Diagon Alley is super interesting to me. Instead, you get random drama and the big evil at the school. Let me see some dirt with the riffraff and some underground magic stuff going on in the world. Yeah, they could have gone more into like darker arts, like when they're like, oh, Death Eaters, ooh, they're so scary. But it's like, they go over to like the three unforgivable curses. Um, but then it's like, what else do they do? Oh, multiple movies taking place in the school is boring. Um, I don't think so. It gives them like a central location. With, I mean, I guess I could see how like, uh, crazy that is. Cause it's like, really, it has to happen in the school. Like Voldemort can't do his like evil magic plans outside of the school. Like, but then I guess if he was really going after Harry, in the beginning, then it makes sense that everything would always happen at school because that's where Harry is most of the year. But then, you know, book five also goes somewhat into the, into um, Sirius's house. And seven, the, they don't really go back to school. And six, they're in school. Six was a weird book. I didn't really like six. It made no sense. I see what you mean. Do you have something to say, witness? Yes, I knew it. It bears out. Your questions hold. Mr. Nodahudu, don't worry. About what? Without delving into the details, there is no inconsistency. What? Even if Andrew had been locked in Mr. Asmus' chest, my trusty tool wouldn't have moved. Andrew remaining on the stage is consistent with my calculations. What? But there was like not a lot of blood in the Crystal Tower either. No? What? It would seem your illusions have been shattered. Clearly we should hear the accused explanation. Or should I say this brilliant scientist's explanation? Hmm. Just when I found an inconsistency in the prosecution's arguments. Scientists. No, I think Albert is just... stupid. Very well, the defendant will testify again. Provide us with the scientific explanation as to why the inconsistency asserted by the defense fails to hold. In the name of Apollo, I will, my lord. Apollo Justice. Like, there are competitions happening in the school and people just want to mess with Harry Potter and stuff, but it's just not interesting. I tapped out during Goblet. Goblet was my favorite! To be clear, I'm still at the stage of gathering data in my research. My hypothesis states that the Kinesis cannot transport metal, though. Hence, the metal weapon would have stayed put. Then his glasses would have stayed, you stupid idiot! In other words, the point just raised by Mr. Nadahudo isn't an inconsistency at all. Mr. Asma was the patron of my research. Without him, my work wouldn't have been possible. Now I have a duty to protect the incredible machine that we built together. You are on trial for murder, you dumb idiot. So, the thrust of your testimony, Professor, is... That based on his hypothesis, metal objects cannot be moved by this method of instantaneous kinesis. In other words... In other words, since the screwdriver is made of metal, even if it remained lodged in the victim's chest, its subsequent discovery on the stage, despite the victim being found elsewhere, is not an inconsistency. And therefore... And therefore, Professor Albert Hairbrain could still have been the killer. My great hypothesis holds you. Just go to jail. I don't care about defending you anymore. Just go to jail. We had to make the cage used to contain the subject from wood for that very raising. I was not addressing you, witness. Um, Professor Hairbrain. Yes? Whose side are you on here? I don't take sides, Mr. Nadahudu. No, no, no. My only interest lies in upholding my hypothesis. I'm a scientist, after all. Is he working for us or against us? It's very hard to tell. 
Let's see how you cross-examine this testimony, my Nipponese friends. Yes, fire away, Mr. Narodo. I want to strangle him. My opinions specifically come from the movies, by the way. I never read the books. I can't read books. I'm pretty sure I have aphantasia. Oh, Nipponese toast! <laughs> That's great. Um, I thought the books were cool. Because, hmm. Also with movies, I mean, probably from a practical standpoint, they're like, we don't want to keep shooting new locations, and we don't want to keep using different settings because that costs money, and we should just reuse assets. I mean, they might have, like, made new sets and castles, interiors for, like, uh, the different movies. But it's just like, we already have this here. It's so easy. And people have already seen it and know how it's laid out and everything. So they're just like, yeah, let's just keep reusing the school. I've got my research. Can I, hence the metal would have stayed put. Mm. This is what killed him. He got shot in the heart with the crossbow. But anyways, um... Let me look at this. Oh, damn. This isn't metal. His belt things are, um, wood. But this has to be a metal. No? How did that transport with him? And his, his button. I feel like I have to press the second statement. I thought it was cool when they visited Weasley uh, house and you saw dishes being washed by magic. I want to see more stuff like that. Yeah, for a school being full of magic, they did they really didn't show a lot of different kind of magic. Like maybe some economics and daily life and how magic would cause day-to-day -day life in long term. True, they didn't really show that. They didn't really, like, write about that in the books either. Because underage wizards are not allowed to use magic outside of school. <laughs> yeah. Your hypothesis states it, so it isn't proven then. No, no, of course not. It's really hypo hypothesis, but a good one, based upon thousands of calculations. But it is widely known that metals can't be decomposed by electrolysis. Yes, of course, so I am right. My hot pipe, blah, my hot pipe, blah, blah. Why can't I say hypothesis? My hypothesis is clearly correct. What is it about incriminating himself that makes this man so happy? It's the whole reason that the birdcage is made of wood, you see. Sorry, the birdcage? Yes, that's what I call the sea obtusa cage in which Mr. Asman was placed for the kinesis. Ah, oh, the jail cell in which the victim was detained. It does indeed to be made seem to be made of a timber of some sort. I'll thank you not to refer to it as an instrument of incarceration, your lordship. In short, any weapon lodged in the victim when he was beamed away by instantaneous kinesis would have been left behind on stage if it was made of metal, correct? Yes, that's it. Yes, yes, yes. It all fits perfectly within the, math with the mathematical model. But the ultimate conclusion, then? Is that the defendant alone had the opportunity to inflict this fatal injury on the victim, is it not? Ah! Ah, indeed, sir. Someone beat me out of this nightmare. In other words... There's an inconsistency... What else could I possibly press? Be clear, I'm still at this... Uh... Press this. <gasps> Oh shoot, my stream died? Why? Am I back? I'm back? Oh gosh. I'm sorry that happened. I don't know. Oh, huh, it's not my internet connection. Cause it's, hmm, I wonder what's wrong. Streamlabs. Twitch, why you keep dropping my streams? This is not cool. You seem to be pleased by that. Yes, another example of my hypothesis holding true. But a sense of sarcasm, Mr. Nadahudu. Are you not pleased? No! I knew it. At the end of the day, I'm the one responsible for Mr. Asman losing his life. The advancement of science is no excuse, I know that. 
No, you're quite right. Tell the court, did you have a closer relationship with Mr. Rosman? Oh, well, no, not really. I mean, I'd only met him two or three times. We only ever discussed my hypothesis and the project, and the research grant, of course. My hypothesis. They wanted the machine to work. But Asmund wanted the money for himself, so they were supposed to shoot... They were supposed to shoot Albert in the chest with the dart, but instead they hit Asmund. So like, if you have magic in your world that can do menial tasks, how would that affect the economy in the sense of dumb labor and you have a bunch of people causing trouble? The politics would have been interesting to think about, but magic, cook, um, etc, etc, and people no longer have basic skills, something like that. There's magic set to macros too, ha 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 ha. Yeah, that's true, like, how many different kinds of jobs are there for wizards in the wizarding world if you can use magic to do, you know, simple tasks? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, wait a minute. Can I do? I can't do profiles. Never mind. I'll just press every statement. How did you come to know Mr. Asmund in the first place? A year ago now, a small provincial science journal published a little paper about my work. That's a scientific journal. Good gracious! I should I should need new spectacles. I might have had an extraordinary hypothesis and great promise, but at the time I had no money. I I had to eat tiny little meals at a tiny little cafe and drink watered down water out of a tiny little glass. But Mr. Asma read the paper and came to visit me in my tiny little laboratory. And offered you money to help fund your work. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. I handled the theoretical side of things, and Mr. Asma provided me with an engineer for the practical. And the three of us provide produced that fantastic machine together. The machine that you brought to the Great Exhibition to demonstrate. We, we had to apply to the government for some sort of inspection to be allowed to exhibit, I think. I didn't understand all the side of things. Mr. Asman took care of it all of it. He was a wonderful man. Really, I owe him everything. Who was your engineer? Mata! When you say that you built the machine together, does that mean you were involved in its construction? Yes. Well, not exactly. I'm not so good with the practical side of the machines myself, so the physical construction was done by an engineer. Little remains of your creation now, though, following the explosion. Repair will be... will no doubt be impossible. Yes, yes, I realize that. But still... If... if someone were to gather all the broken parts, they could discover the secret of my hypothesis. But Mr. Asman and I toiled over that machine for so long, we put our hearts and souls into it. I have to protect our work. Okay, new hypothesis. The engineer saw everything that was happening, and he's like, Oh, okay, I'm gonna kill this- I'm gonna kill Odious Man. Odious Man, um, frame it on Albert, and I will get away with the machine and the knowledge and the money. That's my new hypothesis. So what's left of the machine must be kept safe. That's the only fair, because what happened was an accident. That's the extent of the testimony, then. Thank goodness for that. I don't want him doing any more damage. He's already basically proven that he could have been the culprit. But it seems as though all he really cares about is defending his hypothesis. Still, I wonder, what if his hypothesis is just fundamentally flawed? I guess I should also press this, because that's the only statement I haven't pressed. And yet your retort to my argument wasn't lacking in confidence in any way. No scientist can find the truth without first finding self-belief. Those are the words of a certain scientist I hold in the very highest esteem. But you realize that disproving my argument puts you in a very precarious position, don't you? No scientist should strive to protect himself more than he strives to protect the truth. More words of the same great scientist, you know? Words that are causing me a lot of trouble. Who is the scientist? I'm afraid I couldn't tell you, Mr. Nadahudo. What? But as soon as I remember the magnificent genius's name, you'll be the first to know! It might be worth keeping the names of your idols to mind? You're wasting your breath, my learned friend. This Scatterbrain even forgets my name at times. So Lord Van Zeeks really did have a friend once, but I didn't notice how freezing over. Ha! 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 Hmm... Let's... let's do something. Let's... Uh... 
Yes. Um. So maybe it's hard to find a job in the wizard world, so you have to leave to the muggle world, but since people grew up with magic, it's hard to do anything in the human world without magic. Maybe they, maybe they have it. Uh, if you use magic in the muggle world, they send you to prison for reals reals. And maybe there could be a race war between muggles and humans after the humans find out somehow you have a war with magic versus tech. I mean, isn't that kind of what, um... Kind of what, uh... Eddie Redmayne. Hufflepuff. Fantastic Beasts is kind of doing. Um, cause they're like, oh no, magic in the real world, but cause, um, what's his face? Grindelwald is trying to be like, magic is the best, ha ha ha. And so they bring their battles into the real world. It was the picture! Always go with your gut. Professor Hairbrain, you say that according to your hypothesis. Nothing made of metal can be beamed by instantaneous kinesis using the machine you made, is that right? Yes, that's right. Spot on. Exactly correct. In that case, I'd ask you to have a look at this photograph that was taken at the scene. In particular, I'd like you to pay attention to the victim's face. You can clearly see that Mr. Asmund is wearing a pair of spectacles with a metal rim. What? Metal? No. Metal count. Let's stop. Metal? No! Snake? Snake? Snake! We've already established that the proposed murder weapon, the screwdriver, was found on the stage. However, if your hypothesis correctly predicted that outcome, it should also have predicted that the metal rimmed spectacles would be found in the same place. Ah! My hypothesis! My hypothesis! Professor Hairbrain, this isn't easy for me to say, but your hypothesis is clearly flawed. Wow! So easy for me to say. Stop trying to get yourself killed, man. Order! Council, what is the implication of this? If on the day in question the alleged instantaneous kinesis never actually took place, then it's entirely possible that the victim was killed somewhere other than the stage. And in that case, someone other than the defendant could have been the culprit. What? But my hypothesis! My hypothesis is sound! That's why it's only a hypothesis, and then when you act, do the actual experiment, then your hypothesis can be, like, nixed or... or proved. Yummy. I proved it that day. The experiment was a success. The experiment was proof of all my work. Shut up, it wasn't. If I could say something here in my capacity as a fellow of the Royal Society. Yes, Joe number four, go ahead. As a man of science, there's one thing I simply cannot abide. And that's a fraud who pretends to be a fellow man of science. What? Wait, wait, Scott. Are you suggesting my science is suspect? It's just been disproved, hasn't it? In front of all of us. In other words, the whole demonstration was a complete nonsense from start to finish. Believe me, my fellow jurors, when I tell you that this man is a heel, a bounder, and a fraud. I think maybe he he killed Asmund to be like, no, we can't let your research go public. I say the records of that machine should be stripped down and thoroughly examined. No, never! The machine is essence of my entire hypothesis. It's protected by the special little blah blah blah. What the devil is that blasted act all about, eh? Who made up such a daft role? I don't like the way this seems to be going. What's the best way for me to help the professor? Save? <laughs> That's the best way for me to help him? Uh, I will wait and see! Maybe I should watch and wait for the time being. My feeling is the machine requires a thorough examination. But what about this special dispensation that's been mentioned? Oh gosh, this is all too much. It's determined that the machine itself was the metal weapon, I think you'll find that actual reply. Of course it's the metal weapon, anyone can see that plain as day! So we're all in agreement, are we, that the machine should be stripped? If I don't do something, though... <laughs> Professor Hairbrain has yet to perfect his invention. That would seem to be the case, yes. But even so... Even so what? Going to such trouble and expense to create a fake machine to display in public... He would have absolutely no reason to do such a thing. <laughs> Dude, we want the chance to inspect the machine. So shut up! <laughs> he had an obvious reason to do exactly that. 
for the research grant money. Ah. If the government was foolish enough to have deemed this man's ridiculous notion plausible, he and his conspirators would have received a handsome sum indeed. Conspirators? What would be the value of such a grant? Ten pounds. Ten thousand? You're an order of magnitude out, madam. Five hundred pounds a year. Oh, oh. you can live with handsome on that much for years. The society has noticed an increase in various public demonstrations in the field of scientific in science recently. And plenty of scientists argue with each other to get the largest slice of the funding cake. People's greed is plenty motive enough for murder, I assure you. No, no, no. I have deceived everyone, least of all government. My hypothesis is sound. The science is sound. Please, you must believe me. The hypothesis and the science can be sound, but the machine could be faulty, so let us examine it, you dumb idiot. No matter how unbelievable this hypothesis may seem to you, ladies and gentlemen, the fact remains that the victim was transported instantly to the Crystal Tower. Which means that the experiment was a success. Ah, Barak! And therefore... The only person who could have possibly committed this murder is the accused. Ah, Barak. I knew you'd say that. Where's this heading? I have no idea. My lord, if I may. Yes, Lord Vanzix. The prosecution would like to summon new witnesses to the stand. New witnesses? What would be the nature of their involvement? They were spectators of the demonstration at the exhibition, who were occupying special seats. Eyewitnesses? Very well, the court grants the prosecution's request. I should very much like to hear from the eyewitnesses to the incident. The prosecution's stance is clear. This experiment was no postiche. The accused killed the financier victim there on the public stage before the very eyes of the spectators. Now, my learned friend. Oh, yes? It's time for you to make your own stance clear. There's clearly a flaw in the professor's hypothesis. I can definitely see that. But where does that leave me? We shall take a short recess now. During which time, the prosecution will prepare its new witnesses to take the stand. As you wish, my lord. Good. In that case, court is adjourned for 20 minutes. Did you finish Endwalker? I did! I... I, um... Did the big trial with the very beautiful boss, and um... Oh, whoa! This part's already over? I was... Ooh. Okay. I was like, I need to play until I reach the next checkpoint, but I already have. But it's too short, I gotta keep going. Mr. Tadahudu. What on earth were you playing at just now? Or rather... What on earth were you playing at all along? My hypothesis... Shut up! My amazing hypothesis! You've been picking holes in it from the start! Sorry about that. Not sorry at all. But you promised me. You... You said you proved that tragic explosion was an accident, not murder. You're the one. You're the one. Who's making it look like murder. You dumb fool. You you did the Elagia trial? What's that? Is there a new are there new quests? Wait, hold up, I need to look at this. Um FF14 and Walker MSQ. Um 86-87. That is course might ring for all. Yeah, I did this, right? Yeah, um... Am I level 90? Endwalker. Main scenario quests. Uh, post-Endwalker. Alice of Legacy, Yashtola, Satrap's Duty. Did I do this? No, I, yeah, I think I did. What is this, um... Happy cool? this? Yeah, I did. It 
it's gonna be the engineer. Yeah, I think it's gonna be the engineer. You saw the credits, remember when I joked that everyone died at the end that you laughed? I don't think I really paid attention to the credits. Oh wait, uh, I don't think I read that last line. You said you... You said you keep my precious affection from falling into anyone else's hands. But all you've done so far is try to undermine me. I'm going to slap this dude so hard. Yes, I did make a promise. You're right. I said that I'd believe in you and fight for your freedom to the very end. But I also told you I was no scientist. I don't understand your hypothesis. The fact is, there's an undeniable flaw in your logic, isn't there? Ah, but if I just run through some equations... Yes, you see, it's because my work is incomplete. Perhaps it is. Nevertheless, a man died as a consequence, didn't he? Oh. Oh no! What do you mean, oh no? You're right. You're so right. It's all my fault. I have no right to blame you for my failures. I'm a disaster. Not just as a scientist, but as a human being. Yes, thank you. Well, that might be a little over the top. No, it's not. He is a failure. <laughs> He's annoying. And while we're on the subject... What about Barrack? He's being awful. Claiming his old university friend to be a murderer, you mean? It's a disaster. Not just as a prosecutor, but as a human being. Oh, but no. Wait, he's the Reaper, isn't he? Perhaps he's not classified as Homo sapiens anymore. You're an idiot. That's what you are. Glad that's cleared up. Can I double check something with you? Ah, uh, yes? What? The machine and demonstration you prepared, they were based entirely on your hypothesis, I presume. There was no trickery involved? I drew the plans for the machine with my very own hands. Every line was painstakingly drawn with the firm belief that the science is, only the f science is the only future. So yes, it's true that my hypothesis hasn't reached maturity yet, but please, Mr. Nanahoda, you must believe in it. So if it didn't reach full maturity, why would you test it out on with a living human being? Like, why didn't you test it out with an apple or something. Like, you... Dumb idiot! Alright, Professor, I understand. Council Defendant! Prosecution's witnesses are ready to take a start. Court is about to be in session again. Make your way into court, please. I hate this. Okay, never mind. Do you play Pokemon Go? Yes. Hey, his great-great-great-grandson invents Flubber. Ha ha ha! It all hinges on that demonstration. If the professor's hypothesis is as sound as he claims, it leaves him as the only person who could possibly have killed the victim. But on the other hand, Mr. Sholmes was adamant. A practical implementation such as was attempted by the professor is quite impossible. So really, what should I be trying to prove here? You should be proving that Albert didn't kill him, but Albert just like shoots himself in the foot? To make him look guilty? Dumb idiot. <laughs> In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby reconvene the proceedings of this court. Councils for defense and prosecution, are you ready for the new witnesses to testify? The prosecution is ready, my lord. As is the defense, my lord. So, Lord Van Zix, I believe these next witnesses saw the demonstration on the day in question with their own eyes. Indeed they did. And as luck would have it, one of them is a police detective. So the testimony we are about to hear can be considered highly reliable. Perfect, a detective of all people. The prosecution's stance remains unchanged. Though it ended in tragedy, the demonstration on the day in question was scientifically sound. And consequently, the sole person with the opportunity to have committed this act of murder is the only other individual to have been present on the stage at the time the accused. Thank you, counsel. The prosecution's position is clear. So, bring forth your witnesses now. Bailiff, show the witnesses in. Make me dab! Pew! Sholmes is wrong like half the time. Why he giving them the time of day? Because he's the great detective. Ooh. Oh my word! That child is scary. Witnesses, state your names and occupations for the court to hear. My name is Balthasar Loon. I am the impresario of the all the hot air balloons in the vicinity of the experimental stage. 
My name is Wilhelm Kostreit Sig Sigismund Ormstein. I've come to see the great exhibition all the way from my home in Bohemia. I'm very rich. <laughs> Inspector Jean of the Strong, Scotland Yard. I'm a great detective. Even Erlach Sholmes agrees. I was on security duty at the exhibition and I got to go up in one of the balloons. It was amazing. Gina, again. But she did mention that she'd seen the disaster from up in a balloon, actually, didn't she? And she clearly loved every minute of it. What is this game? It's Great Ace Attorney. There were three balloons flying near the public experimentation stage when the incident occurred. Two of these witnesses were in one such balloon at the time and saw events unfold from the skies above. You make it sound like they were in the clouds. It was only an altitude of circa 60 feet. Very low. You can't see nothing if you fly too high, can you? 60 feet. About 18 meters then. Thank you for your introductions. Now, you will give your formal testimony for the courts. Kind of describe exactly what you witnessed, especially those of you who had a vantage point above the stage. I think he's pretending purposely getting deductions wrong to see what you've noticed. Mm -hmm. It was an incident terrible. I'm only grateful that my balloons are not damaged. There's this huge bang from the stage and then the next second another bang in the sky beside us. And from the music smoke, a cage appeared out of nowhere. The cage, it fell from the sky like a stone, and it crashed into the crystal tower. I didn't get a look, good look inside the cage, but no one went near it after it crashed into the tower. No one went near it, okay. That's when he could have shot him with the crossbow! A most extraordinary collective account, I must say. Could I just clarify something? There's a detail in the witness's testimony that I have not heard any mention of until now. Specifically, that there were two explosions? More precisely, two explosions in two separate places, yes. When the demonstration began, the balloon carrying the two witnesses around was around here. There were other balloons in the air nearby at the time carrying other passengers as well, to be clear. Then, as the power was supplied to the machine for the demonstration, the first explosion occurred. The so-called birdcage that contained the victim disappeared from the stage, and a moment later... The second explosion occurred, directly adjacent to the balloon carrying the witnesses. Wah! Chicken tuna! Thank you so much for the 18 month sub! I hope you've been well, dude! <clears throat> oh, my throat is dry. Acronym your name. Oh! Okay. Chicken tuna. Mmm... C. C-H-I-C-K-E-N. Acronym your name. Cool Hip... Uh... Cool Hip... What begins with I? Cool Hip... Um... <laughs> wow, my mind is blanking. Interesting. I'm sorry, Chicken Zuna. Cool, hip, ingenious. Um, ingenious chickens. Um, kaboom! <laughs> wow, this is so terrible. Um, kaboom. Um. Uh, enough noises to, to not arbitrate. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so sorry. My mind is blanking. That was a terrible acronym. I should get rid of acronym your name. I don't know how to do it well. <laughs> Kentai. Ha ha ha. Uh, did I read this line? I think I did. I was very surprised. Suddenly a cage appeared before my eyes with a person inside. The blast was so hot, but I didn't want to miss a scene, so I kept my eyes wide.
I still have lots of money. Precisely, who is this curious infant? I'm told he is a young noble of bohemian royalty. Apparently, he disguised himself in order to steal unnoticed into the Great Exhibition. Yeah, I am here in London on a sightseeing trip with my elementary school. You will have the benefit of a child's point of view in the testimony. Do we really need that? When I remove my mask, this is what I look like. Ah, yes, I see. A delightful face, I'm sure. Yeah, everybody says so. Great skies, then. The point is, the testimony of these fitted is further substantiate or skip whatever. Namely, that despite ending in an explosion, instantaneous kinesis was successfully demonstrated. And furthermore, that until the arrival of the police, no one approached the crystal tower where the victim fell. Therefore, only the accused who was with Mr. Asman on the stage could possibly have committed the murder. Yes, thank you, counsel. The prosecution's views on the matter are quite clear. So, the defense is cross-examination now, please. Yes, my lord. My balloons are not damaged. There were three balloons flying above the experimentation stage at the time, I understand. See, si, see, si, all three of them, my bellissimi bambini. They are very popular, signor. Some people will pay ten pounds for one ride. Ten pounds? That's more than my annual stipends. Twenty pounds a month. That is my pocket money. Royals have all the luck. I got up there for free, I did. By the old, I work for Her Majesty's police card, you know? Detectives have all the luck. <laughs> If they're so popular, why would you only be operating such a small number of balloons, though? Because, if I have too many in disguise, they could crash into each other. The operators for the balloons were decided by lots, with each operator manning a particular area. See, si, and the zone above public experimentation stage is the most profitable. The other impresarios, they hate me. Thank you, witness. I think the court has a clear picture of the arrangements for balloon rides at the exhibition. Perhaps we can hear more about what you actually witnessed of the incident. Right, I can fill you in there, my lord. Huge bang behind. So you actually saw that accident happen from up in the air? Yep, isn't it amazing what a detective gets to do, eh? I'm telling you, Odo, being a lawyer is a monk's game. You should join the force and we could go flying together. You know me so well. Yes, well, anyway, could you tell us exactly what you saw, do you think? Everything. We saw everything, because we were up above it all. That dodgy cove climbing into a cage, and that dodgy professor pulling all them levers. And that's when it happened. That's when there was that massive bang and the cage disappeared. Just like that. Hmm. You're describing the moment of the subject's body was decomposed by the electricity, I believe. I didn't know what to make of it. But then there was another bang right in the ear. I looked round and there was a huge fireball right next to us in the sky, and there was nothing there before! What's up? Keep in mind it's getting late, you worked all day after a good night's rest, you'll be on it. True, true. I do need to sleep more. I need to sleep earlier. We. Um, uh, Master Gods, does your memory of the day differ? My teacher at elementary school said that when you meet someone for the first time, you should always use your full name. Ah, yes, um, what was it again? Wilhelm Gosfreich Sigmund Ormstein. Just the four names, then. The point is, do you have something to say? Something to add in response to Detective Gina Lestrade's last remark, perhaps? Oi, get it right, Odo! It's Inspector Lestrade! Why does everyone have a problem with how I address them at the moment? That is not what I saw. Oh? Yeah, there was a second explosion and it was right beside our balloon. That is true. But I'm sure... Which is what I said, in it. One minute there was nothing there, the next a massive explosion. My teacher at elementary school said that when someone else is speaking, if you are rude enough to interrupt, you will have the most awful life imaginable. Are all bohemians brought up to be so full of joy? I'm very rich. 
Just before the second explosion happened next to a balloon, I clearly witnessed a green balloon flying in the sky. A green balloon? Eh, you what? I never saw nothing like that. But I did! I saw it! And you can't say I didn't! I will complain to the council! I will cry and scream! My testimony is the truth! I am a bohemian prince! You cannot say it's a lie! That is not allowed! <laughs> Playing the bleeding royalty card, are you? Typical. Says the orphan who likes to remind people she works for Her Majesty's police. In that case, young man, I must ask you to amend your formal testimony. In the interest of cordial nations, National relations between Great Britain and Bohemia. That is here. We do you have a green balloon. 99's a lift balloon. Something, 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 green balloon. A green balloon, you say? Are you sure about that? Of course I'm sure. I'm a proud Bohemian prince. All these questions are making me boring. I think you mean bored. English is very annoying. The language of my countrymen is far superior. Ragazzo, it is very long to lie. Lie? Lying balloons never explode. For the same reason the planets never explode. It is logical. Please tell me that doesn't mean logical. If you insult me, you insult all Bohemia. Matai! I will have the army come and shoot all of your stupid balloons out of the sky. All of them! I am very rich. <laughs> Here you are, your highness. If only all international incidents were so easily resolved. Now that peaceful relations have been restored here in the courtroom, perhaps we could return to the testimony. Did you also see the bomb at the cage materialized, Mr. Loon? No, no. I did not see the explosion myself. However... The cage as it fell from the sky like a stone and it crashed into the crystal tower. Did you see that actually happen? Eh, no, in reality I did not. I saw it after it hit the tower. There's a grand confusion around the stage. I don't to see what had happened. I was terrorized by the idea that one of my balloons had crashed. I suppose they are his livelihood. But when I looked up to the sky, all my precious balloons were still there. I saw it though. I saw it slam into the tower. After all, I am a detective now. Then tell us what you saw, Inspector Lestrade. That's what I like to hear. I didn't get a look inside the cage, but no one knew my ear after it crashed into the tower. Was it you who gave the order to keep people away? Eh? You sure had order? That would have been me. I was up in a balloon, weren't I? Right. So because I wasn't available, it was the boss who had to leg it over there. He was getting shoved and kicked all over by the panic inspectors as he tried to seal off the scene. It's a real sight to behold, I can tell you. Amazing! Or Inspector Gregson. So anyway, I couldn't see the cage that well because of all the smoke. And I didn't really want to see, to be honest. I was scared out of me wits. Keep it together, Inspector. The prosecution really is asserting that the demonstration was genuine, but what if it was actually some kind of switch around trick instead? That would mean that the victim was never actually on stage in first place. The two explosions would have thrown everyone watching into a panic for sure. I think I need to find out more about what exactly people saw all at the time. Let me try. Kind-hearted, intelligent, caring kid eating noodles two nights a week. Oh! Yo, that's that's a, so much a better acronym. Holy crap. Except you need a you need a C word to start it off cuz kind is K. Dang. Um uh green. Oh, green balloon. 99's a green balloon. Something something. Green balloon. <laughs> No, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Ah! Green balloon. Green balloon. Green balloon. Damn it. That means this must have been from a balloon. Um. Airplane machine. Wait, but this diagram shows two balloons. So wait, wait, wait. 
Uh, my balloons were not damaged. Bang, another bang in the sky. Okay, it just fell from the sky. Didn't get a look as well. Oh, frack, what is the... Shoot, what is it? Rack, 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 rack. Okay, I'm gonna cheat. I'm sorry. I just don't want to spend too much time on this. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Wait, what? Oh. Whoops, I forgot to- wait, what? Ah, uh, some sort of lever here. What the? What is this? It looks like a cross between a bow and a gun! I think it's probably used for the same thing too. Okay. Do, 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 do. This is Groove here. Must be where the arrows are loaded, I suppose. So I was right. It's a boat. Uh. Uh. Blah, blah, blah. In fact, if I had one of these, baby, I could have beaten Kazuba and killed the archery training. Okay. Um. I didn't examine this. So this was actually supposed to be evidence in the previous testimony. Wait, but huh? Okay, whatever. Um, pursue... Um... That's what I- okay. <laughs> Cute-hearted, intelligent carry kid, yeah. Um, gonna present- this is where I have to present this. Okay. Mr. Loon, in your testimony, you said that all three of your balloons had been operating at the time were undamaged. See, si, that is correct. If they had been caught in the explosiones, it would have been terrible. I wonder if you might know what this is. Ah, I think it may be. See, si, part of a balloon, a burnt piece of the fabric of the envelope. Sorry, the envelope? Pardon, there's the round, large round part of the balloon which becomes filled with hot air. It is made from very thick fabric lined with rubber. You do not want it to rip when you are in the sky. Just as I thought. This piece of cloth was found near the experimentation stage. In other words, as Master Gotts just testified. A green balloon did ex indeed explode that day. Eh? If all the balloons in the sky above the experimentation stage belong to you, Mr. Loon, then your statement that they were all undamaged clearly contradicts the evidence. No! First was if a balloon exploded that day, why didn't the man say so? Maybe everyone on board was killed. Oh no, having just spent ten whole pounds for the experience, how awful. Seems to me like those things crash 50% of the time anyway. The instantaneous kinesis did occur, but after the explosion on the stage. The point of the materialization shifted to a location occupied by a balloon. Causing the balloon to explode? Yes, eminently plausible. An unfortunate traffic accident, as it were. But it changes nothing about the pertinent facts. Hold it! This I cannot accept! Why not, Mr. Loon? You are suggesting that I am a liar! That person died in a balloon incidente! There's no need to get fired up, Mr. Loon. The victim was the sole fatality that day. That's right, and I prove it! Balthazar Loon is not a liar! There is no such balloon in the sky! It is non possible! You're saying it's impossible? Why? This court has more important matters to discuss than the number of balloons that were operating that day. Hey! <laughs> But we can't ignore the fact that nobody appears to have known anything about this other balloon until now. My lord, the defense calls for further testimony from Mr. Loon. I concur. There is clearly more to the truth here than meets the eye. It's imperative that we clear up the issue of this phantom balloon, I feel. 
Witness, you will give supplementary testimony a testimony about the balloons you are operating at the ex exhibition. Ah! Grazie, my lord. Haha, <laughs> Gina and... and little kid. Their poses are pretty similar. As I said, both of our balloons no liar! Every balloon I had in the sky landed safely! All three of my balloons are carrying passengers! If they fell to the ground in an explosion, eh, what a catastrophe! But you can't get away with the fact that the burnt-up bit of cloth was found at the scene, can you? The cop was at yard and reckoned it was probably some debris thrown from the explosion on the stage. This stupid old ragazzo is mistaken. My balloons are the red and blue zigzag stripes anyway. Hmm, so your assertion is that the balloon this child saw was not one belonging to you. See, si, exactamente, if he even saw a balloon in the first place. I do not like the sound of it. It is very bad for business. I have a good mind to sue the land of Bohemia. If you attack us, we will fight back. It will be war, all out war. I'm very rich. What happened to all that war? Mr. Loon certainly doesn't appear to be lying, but that doesn't change the fact that the testimony and evidence are contradictory here. If the defense is unable to find fault with the witness's statements, the court must consider them the truth. Think long and hard on that, my learned friend. The situation has clearly changed now. I have to get to the bottom of what happened here, no matter what it takes. Counsel, you may now cross-examine the witnesses. I'll think long and hard. <laughs> Every balloon I had in the sky, all three of my balloons. It would be quite a catastrophe if they fell to the ground for any reason, I think. On that note, Mr. Loon, tell me, what is it that keeps these balloons in the sky? Are you an idiot? Sorry? That is like asking why does a candle burn bright? It burns bright because it burns bright, and a balloon flies because it flies. What else? <sighs> that must be Italian for I don't know. There are two types of flying balloons, hot air balloons and gas balloons. Hot air balloons work on the principle of hot air being less dense than cold air. Whereas gas balloons derive their lift by using a gas that is lighter than air. See, si, and my balloons are filled with the magic gas, I believe. Hydrogen, lighter than air, but highly explosive. Good lord. I do not permit smoking of the cigarettes in any of my balloons. The magic gas does not like fire. Even a small, even a small spark of static electricity could cause the entire balloon to explode. What's the matter with you using an ore? All that comes out of your mouth is explosione, explosione. I tell you, my balloons are perfectly safe. They have to be, or I cannot eat. None of my balloons exploded that day. I am completely sure. But if you still say that is what happened, you must show me the proof! Alright, so Mr. Loon had three balloons in the air that day. If none of them were damaged, then what was the one that exploded? <laughs> he like, kinda looked at camera, it was kinda creepy. Burnt a bit of cloth with sand and sing, probably some debris... There was considerable damage to the stage and surrounding area, wasn't there? Yeah, some of the cows what, what, what were watching the experiment were caught in blast and injured. But jumping the old contraption didn't kill over, eh? I hadn't even considered that. It seems there was a great panic after the incident occurred. Nevertheless, the police shouldn't have missed a torn piece of the envelope from a balloon. Inspector Gregson can expect repercussions. Like me swiping all his fish and chips, eh? The man's sole pleasure. None of this matters! The scrap of balloon envelope means nothing! Niente! The stupid regards of my balloons have the red and blue zigzag stripes anyway. You mean the color is wrong? See, si, Signor, I do not have any green balloons in my warehouse. And yet, a piece of green cloth was found at the scene, and it is unmistakably from a balloon. Well, well, I do not know how that can be. For the sake of argument, let's say that the green balloon did explode above the stage. You couldn't therefore conclude that it happened on the day in question. Why not? There have been recreational balloon fights over Hyde Park operating b from before the Great Exhibition. Oh, balloon flights! I thought it said balloon fights, and I'm like, who's fighting on a balloon? 
One could have exploded on some earlier date. Unfortunate, as I'm sure you'd agree. You, you believe it may have been from some earlier balloon accident that predates the exhibition? See, si, exactamente, as the senor says, it's not from one of my balloons. Clearly, this little ragazzo from Bohemia is mistaken about what he saw. Is something wrong, Master Cox? It's Master Wilhelm Goldstrike Sigismund Ormstein! It was on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, something is very wrong. I know what I saw. There's, well, there's a green balloon there. I swear it. I swear it on old Bohemia. You can speak as much bad language as you like, but the change is nothing. Yo, stop giving him your money. If you do not have evidence, ragazzo, then I must tell your parents to punish you, eh? Perhaps we'll just let the judge decide when it comes to punishments. Evidence? For this is evidence. To give a simple example, young man. A photograph, for instance. Some tangible proof of what you claim. Well, why didn't you say so sooner? I have the photograph here. Good gracious! What? I not been up in a balloon for so, a little while, so I was very excited. I took lots and lots of photographs. Of the Crystal Tower, of the Bohemian Exhibit, of the Streets of London, of the Hot Inn Cellar, the Bloom! And the Instantaneous Kinesis Experiment? Did you take a picture of that? Yeah, what picture? Really? You did take one? But all I wanted was a ride in a balloon. I was not interested in boring experiments. Never mind that. Can you show us that photograph? Every time it makes us laugh? Of course. And then you will see. You will see that I am not lying. That I really did see a green balloon! It's, he, his picture is not going to be on the stage. Huh? <gasps> Someone shot the balloon! <gasps> Whoa, Luxenden, thank you so much for the raid! Also, hello, how are you? I hope you had a good stream, and I hope you're having a good Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, wherever in the world you are. Oh, that's such a cute emote! Oh my gosh! <gasps> Hearts are so cute. I need new emotes. Uh. Well, I see you are all too shocked to speak. Yes, I think shocked is indeed the word, young man. Give me a balloon. <laughs> yeah, perhaps you cannot see that it was a green balloon from this photograph, but... But... But that is not my fault! That is all the fault of the stupid person who makes the camera! <laughs> <laughs> His cries have umlauts. Oh my gosh. That is one very bohemian sounding cry. <laughs> very well, the court will accept this photograph as evidence. She wants to drop off some folks to more ace attorney. We just finished this trial, so I hope you've been experiencing this. <gasps> you just finished this? Uh, I need to finish this. Uh, I'll get the anti raid RPGs out of storage. <laughs> Um, okay, I need to examine this. It's not my fault. It's the fault of the person who makes the camera. <laughs> I am just a poor rich boy. Okay. So, okay, he's clearly here. Albert is clearly there. Someone is clearly shooting the balloon. What? And there's no one in the hot air balloon? Why would they want to shoot the balloon? There's a small child running. Ha ha ha. Are there any suspicious characters down here? There's normal people. A dude standing there. A lady. Hmm. Still looks like a wax doll to me. <sighs> okay. Well, never mind. I'm sure you have plenty of wonderful sepia memories to take home with you. In any case, when exactly did you take that photograph? Well, it was on the day of the big explosion. You don't say. <laughs> when I pressed the shadow release, there was this very loud bang. And the hot wind rushed out of my face. That means... This photograph was taken a split second before the explosion occurred. Well, if you ask me, this black and white photograph changes nothing. I could not give the flying fig. Lovely language you've picked up. As I thought, Mr. Loon's testimony just doesn't quite add up. 
The young Bohemian boy claims to have seen another fourth balloon, but Mr. Loon vehemently denies the possibility, and it's hard to imagine the man in charge would be mistaken by the number that were in the air. Still, this inconsistency must tell us something, I'm sure. Every balloon landed safely. Carringer, carrying passengers, they fell to the ground in an explosion. What a catastrophe. Yeah, burnt a bit of cloth on the scene. Some debris from the explosion on the stage. My balloons had red. Yeah, I think this balloon is just plain. Yeah, it's just a plain green. There's no zigzags. Oh. Um... Do I present this in the first statement? Because it's like, hey, you had more than three. All three of my balloons. Then what is this? Yes, I was right. Unfortunately, the photograph Master Gots took can't tell us the color of the balloon. But it can tell us something else, something crucially important. What? It shows that the pictured balloon wasn't carrying any passengers. Ah, oh, my goodness, you're right. But surely all balloons would have been carrying passengers. There would be no sense in it otherwise. See, they are for pleasure, for seeing the view. My balloons only fly with passengers. Which tells us that the picture balloon isn't one of them. So when the incident occurred that day, there was a fourth balloon in disguise above the experimentation stage. A mysterious green balloon. I, I know nothing. Niente. I, I can only tell you one thing. If this balloon was not carrying passengers, then it was not one of mine. <laughs> His balloon is pulsating. There are illegal tradesmen everywhere you care to look. Clearly, one such entrepreneur decided to capitalize on the opportunity presented by the Great Exhibition and managed to operate balloon flights on Mr. Loon's patch without them realizing. See, si, see, si, the competizione, trying to seal my profits. I did not notice because of the esperimento that went wrong on the stage. This fourth balloon exploded at the very same moment Mr. Asman beamed from the stage below. Right, so them scraps that fell on the ground after, and left them scorch marks. They didn't come in from the stage at all! It was bits of the balloon raining down! Because no one was in it, it didn't get no attention. A mysterious fourth balloon carrying no passengers silently floating over the experimentation stage. This photograph shows us nothing more. Yeah, nothing? A stray balloon carrying no one and operated by some rogue trader. Clearly it has nothing to do with the case. Hmm. Its relevance does elude me, I must say. The court has seen sufficient evidence and heard ample testimony already. The prosecution calls for this trial to be concluded. No. Hey, I have a crossbow to present. Really? Have we really gotten to the truth yet? No, I can't let this opportunity slip away. The jurors' minds are made up and not in our favor. What else can this photograph tell us? Is there nothing else moving? There's more! Like that shiny light! Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, wait! Please don't give your decisions yet. The photograph from Master Gotts may well be hiding one more vital clue. What's that? A vital clue? We're well past the point of mere possibilities. It's time for definitives now, so tell the court. What exactly does this alleged clue in the photograph prove? The cause of the explosion! We can reasonably assume that the pictured balloon was destroyed in the searing heat of the explosion. Yeah, that's right! Yeah, it was not my fault! Evidently. Because the birdcage from the kinesis machine materialized in the sky where it had been flying. And the balloon being filled with flammable hydrogen instantly and explosively ignited. <laughs> No, that's not what happens. What? It would appear that this photograph requires closer examination. Counsel for the defense, you will highlight the location of this alleged clue in the photograph for the court. Of course, my lord. If you look closely, it's plain enough to see. And what's shown is linked to another piece of evidence we have. In a way, that leads to an unbelievable conclusion. The clue that heavily suggests the real reason the balloon exploded is... This beam of light! The timing of this photograph can only be described as miraculous. If you look, you'll notice there's a bright white line that appears to point directly at the balloon. 
Most likely a ray of light caught incidentally on the film. I'm afraid I can see nothing of the sorts. If you look with the magnifying glass, my lord, it becomes clear what the nature of this bright line really is. Goodness, what is that? Undeniably some flash of light, yes! Oh golly, do, do you think it might be lightning? Read a book. Well, could it have been a finer day? I believe we may be looking at fire. A boat of fire heading straight for the balloon, like an arrow! Indeed, even to my aging eyes it would appear to be a flame of some sort. My word, oh, are you suggesting this flame struck the hydrogen gas that filled the balloon? <laughs> silly toast? Why am I silly toast? What did I do? That's absurd. The balloon would have been 60 feet above the ground at the time. No flame could possibly have reached such a height. <laughs> Actually, it's my opinion that a particular piece of evidence found at the scene reveals how that is exactly what did happen. What evidence? If such evidence exists, Council, then for goodness sake, present it, man! Which evidence explains this mysterious streak of flame that appears to be headed directly for the balloon? <laughs> this was found hidden at the foot of a small ornamental tree near the scene. Good lord, is that a crossbow? An arrow dipped in oil and set alight could have been shot from this weapon. Sending a flaming arrow straight into the hydrogen-filled balloon. Are you suggesting that crossbow was used to deliberately- Blimey, you're right! That streak of light in the photo looks just like an arrow, doesn't it? Then, the explosion of the balloon, it was- Very likely the result of a flaming arrow from this crossbow igniting the hydrogen gas inside it. No! <laughs> I like his little... <laughs> oh, duh! Council, this is an extraordinary supposition. If the aim was to cause the balloon to explode, the shooter could have used a gun, of course. However, there's an obvious reason why that would have been out of the question. The noise of the discharge, of course. That's right. By using a crossbow, the projectile could be fired at the balloon silently. Well, yeah, if someone had shot a gun off in the exhibition grounds, it would have caused a real panic. But with the big explosion, there was a very big panic anyway, no? I don't like this. I should be pleased to have found a plausible new explanation for all this, but something feels wrong. What do you mean it feels wrong? Do you understand the implications of what you're saying, my Nipponese friend? If a flaming arrow did indeed hit the balloon, then obviously it would have exploded. And if the birdcage appeared from the cloud of smoke that ensued... What? Wait a minute. What are you really saying here? I don't get it. What? Was the birdcage beamed up into the sky after all, or what? I could just me. Ah, now I understand. That's what the sinking feeling is about. I think there's a good chance that the birdcage was actually concealed inside the balloon all along. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. There's nothing inside the balloon, though. But that is possible. But then, I don't think we saw any wreckage of the cage on the stage, though, did we not? Hmm. What? Did, did I just hear that correctly, Council? There's no going back now. The horse has bolted. Let's assume, as I said, that the birdcage was hidden inside the green balloon from the start. It can't be in the balloon. Huh? On stage where the experiment was started, the birdcage and the instantaneous kinesis machine disappeared in a cloud of smoke. At that moment, the flaming arrow was fired from the ground, causing the green balloon to explode, drawing the attention of the spectators to the sky above their heads, where it stabbed him in the heart. But there were no burn marks on him. From amid the smoke, the hidden birdcage then appeared to fall down and crash into the crystal tower. I think you'll all agree it's entirely plausible. And what I've just described is the real truth behind the miraculous experiment carried out on that day. Th this I... Good grief! This is ludicrous. What you've described is no science experiment. It's... 
Child's Play, a contemptible display of stage magic. Both Mr. Sholmes and Iris said that the experiment was a scientific impossibility, in which case this is the only way to explain what happened that day. And in any case, the victim's body was found inside the birdcage in the crystal tower. If the instantaneous kinesis didn't take place, how do you explain that? Cause... So yeah, I, I still stick with my idea that the dude inside on the stage was a wax model. Because the dead body inside the tower is real, so... But where could he have been hiding in the balloon? He can't have been hidden in the balloon part, because he would have been very hot. But if the arrow really did shoot him and got his heart, but there's no burn marks. It even says in the autopsy reports there's no burn marks. Hmm. Dang. Hey, I don't know. Ah, um... If I may put in a word as a man of magic myself, such parent discrepancies can easily be explained by some simple deception. Juror number three. All that would be needed to is a doppelganger, someone who looked very similar to the victim, Mr. Rasmund. And having this other man appear on stage to front a show as a body double. Ah, yes, of course. So, in fact... Mr. Asman must have been inside the birdcage that was concealed inside the balloon right from the start. That balloon would have been filled with hydrogen. Anything hidden inside it would have been scattered to the four winds when it exploded. No one would ever have embarked on such a risky adventure. Not necessarily. The explosive force of the balloon gas would have very much depend on the mixture ratio. Chair number four. Flying balloons are rarely filled with pure hydrogen, but a mixture of other gases such as helium as well. Helium on its own doesn't explode, but by controlling the gas mixture ratio, the explosive force can be altered. A mixture ratio. Obviously, the victim's body would have suffered some burns. That would be unavoidable. But not to such an extent as to render this whole obscene charade impossible. So everything that happened can be explained, logically and scientifically. Except he didn't have any burn marks on his body. I never took chemistry class, so this is how I learned. You never took chemistry? Chemistry was interesting. It was a lot of, like, formulas to remember. And I... I didn't like it too much. I never took physics. Unless he was killed before getting into the cage. He was killed before he got in the cage, so he was dead the whole time. That- okay, um, wait, um, where's the autopsy report? Around 2.20 p.m., what time was the thing? Oh, they don't say what time the thing was. The demonstration. Gosh, darn it! <sighs> the explosion that engulfed the stage at the start of the experiment was no accident. It was all a part of an elaborate deception. To make it appear that instantaneous kinesis had occurred. Well, goodness me! And if we accept that this is what happened, it means that the victim, Mr. Asman, was never present on the public experimentation stage to begin with. In short, he couldn't have been killed by the defendant who was on stage in full view the entire time. Ah! Oh! Ninth grade biology, 10th grade earth science and astronomy, 12th grade physics, never took chemistry, and I'm honestly proud of that. Ninth grade for me was... Yeah, 8th grade was earth science, 9th grade was biology, 10th grade was chemistry, 11th grade I took AP bio, I don't know why I did that, I should never have done, um, and then 12th grade I didn't take a science. This will be very hard for the prosecution to counter. Lord Van Zeeks can't credibly maintain that Professor Harebrain is a suspect now. Oh no, who was it? If Albert comes in, I will slap his face. <sighs> Mr. Naruto, I appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Professor. But you can stop now. Just keep your mouth shut, please. Sorry? What's all this about, Mr. Hairbrain? I, Albert Hairbrain, hereby confess that it... that it was... 
that it was me who stabbed Mr. Odious Man. Yes, that was me with my faithful resident and partner, Andrew the Screwdriver. What are you doing? He really wants to protect his invention so much, he's willing to confess to murder. Order. Defendant, explain the sudden confession. Professor Hairbrain, what are you talking about? It's... it's what I've said all along. I must protect my hypothesis and my precious machine. Even if you confess to the murder, they'll still take apart your machine because they'll say it was an instrument of murder, so we gotta find out how to... What? No matter what you do, you can't protect your machine. <sighs> oh, here we go again. I don't know. You stand there and claim it's all a trick. All an elaborate prank. But where's your proof? No, you'd have to examine the machine if you wanted to prove it. Then it would all be over. My beautiful hypothesis would be laid bare. I mean, they... I don't understand this dude. Because he's like... This is my hypothesis for teleportation. But no, you can't examine this because then you'll figure out my hypothesis for teleportation. But then it's like, you created this machine to show that to share your ideas of teleportation I guess he wants like the patent for it the original idea to be like yes it was his creation but this guy makes no sense man if you confess I'm not saving you this time I don't want to save him I want him to be guilty and I want him thrown in jail it's clear that you drew the plans for the experiment but you didn't actually build it it's quite conceivable that you're duped, Professor! If you'll just let me, I can prove- Back! Yes? I'll cooperate. I'll do whatever you say. I swear it. So, so please... Ensure that the suspects are here to protect my creation! Eric, throw that glass in his face. Just shatter it on his face. Pray forgive the discourtesy of filling my hollow chalice at this critical juncture. Here's to my learned Nibonese friend. What? And this upcoming attempt to clarify the defense's position in the light of the accused's confession. Uh. So you intend to formally assert that the experiment was nothing more than a conjuring trick? Because the moment you do... The special dis- blah 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 that protects the professor's invention will cease to apply. The prosecution will then demand a rigorous examination of the machinery involved in order to establish the truth. Yes! <laughs> However, if you acknowledge that the machine is genuine and instrumental in the victim's murder, any chance of investigating will be crushed and the confidentiality of the professor's hypothesis preserved. Cold toast, but I think he knows it wasn't going to work. Of course it wasn't going to work! He immediately, like, experiments using a live human being before using it on inanimate objects? Like, are you dumb? Yes! Well, counsel, what's the defense's official position on this matter? What Professor Hairbrain, my client, actually asked of me was to prove that the explosion on stage was an accident and protect the secrecy of his hypothesis. But there's no way to do that without implying the professor's guilt. Do I protect my client's life by asserting his innocence, or do I uphold my client's request, but see him condemned? Either way, I can't avoid betraying his trust. You've been silent long enough. Isn't, taking your, isn't talking your trade, my learned friend? Or has all knowledge of English escaped your confused Nipponese mind? You know what you gotta do? You gotta investigate the machine! I don't care about him! Mr. Naruto! There's no escape here. I have to make a choice. But it's an impossible one. I have to give up on something. But what? The defense asserts that the defendant's instantaneous kinesis machine was, in fact... Uh, I'm gonna say... Uh, I'm gonna double check with the walkthrough and say it was a conjuring trick. Uh... Uh... Okay. Conjuring trick. Ah! 
Just say it, just say it. Let's examine the machine. No, I can't say it. My client places faith in me. I just can't, I can't just let him down. What must I give up on is not the question you have to ask yourself here. It's what can I protect? Eh? Is she really here? Hello again, Mr. Narahodo. It's been far too long. Sue. Sue's at the song? But, but what are you? Hiya! Ah, my first Sue's at the takedown in six months. There'll be time to talk later, Mr. Narahodo. For now, we must concentrate on the task at hand. Which is working out not what I have to give up on, but what I can protect. Wait, so she's here for real? Cheating toast? I'm not cheating, I'm just confirming my actions. Professor Hairbrain! Ah, uh, yes? Yesterday you told me that science is the pursuit of truth. Well, my job is to pursue, pursue the truth, too. Yes, of course. And personally, I believe that you didn't stab Mr. Asman. I think you've come to realize something yourself, too, haven't you? That your experiment and the machine you built with the victim are questionable. The truth behind that is what we must both pursue now. <laughs> so, you finally opened your eyes. What? And that's for you. Albert, you can't ignore this any longer. Ah, uh, having heard my learned friend's assertion. Don't you have something to say? Barak. Lord Van Zeeks. Gosh, I've never heard him speak that way before. Oh, you missed our outing at Van Zeeks, Susato. You missed all the bats. In truth, there is one thing. Something I've remembered that's of relevance. What? On the day it happened, just before I began the experiment, I saw a man near the stage. A man holding that crossbow. You couldn't tell us this earlier? I beg your pardon. I'm gonna strangle him. I'm gonna strangle him. Professor! Did the man have any distinguishing features? What did he look like? Uh, tall. Taller than me, and thin. Thinner than me, with straight hair. Straighter and wider than mine. Let me see. One less lens than me, too. A monocle. A rather stylish black monocle. But one thing in particular will help to positively identify the man. You see, I know him very well. After all, he's the engineer who built my inven- <laughs> It was the engineer all along. Do, 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 do. It's the engineer all along. He built the machine? That's right. Mr. Asman introduced him to me a year ago. He's... He's a man by the name of... Enoch Drebber. Enoch? Drebber? Does this name mean something? Members of the jury seem flustered. Not a name any scientist wishes to hear. The man's an abomination. Not a name any conjurer wishes to hear either. Who on earth is he? I'm afraid this isn't the first tale of this nature that I've heard in scientific circles in connection with that name. Just talk of other flamboyant experiments that turn out to be nothing but stage trickery in the end. Obviously, the rascal is after government's research grant money. When magicians are in need of money, I have heard of them resorting to these underhand tricks. Some acquaintances of mine with experiences of such things have mentioned Enoch Drebber's name before. The man is both an engineer and a magician. Yes, we're dealing with an unparalleled confidence trickster here. That's Enoch Drebber for you! So he's clearly the guilty guy. My machine's totally legit! Oh, but the engineer who built it had a crossbow that day! <laughs> Nothing suspicious! That's true then. My invention, my great machine, was just a grand illusion. Considering what we've just heard about Mr. Drebber's character, I'm sorry to say that sounds increasingly likely. Even though no one else believed it, I wanted to. I wanted to believe that machine would function exactly as my hypothesis predicted. Which is why you were so opposed to it being investigated, I presume. 
I knew that if the machine was examined in detail, its construction would give away my hypothesis. Obviously, I didn't want that to happen, but at the same time... I knew that if it was found to be nothing more than a trick, than a work of deception, then everything I'd worked towards, all my research, all my dreams, my whole life would be over. No, it wouldn't, because you would find a way that it didn't work, and then you'd fine-tune your formulas or whatever, and then you'd make another machine, you dumb idiot. I was terrified at the prospect. So you really had no idea then, did you? About the true nature of the machine that was built, and the true nature of Mr. Drebber. I never questioned anything. I... I didn't want to question it. It's entirely possible that Mr. Asman and Mr. Drebber were working together to use you as a means of fraudulently acquiring the research grant money. You don't say! When I announced my invention to Krauss that day, it was the finest moment of my career. I pulled all the levers and turned all the dials in exactly the way Drebber had described. When the smoke suddenly started billowing out, I panicked. I didn't know what was happening. But I really don't know how the whole illusion was made to work. I... I don't know anything anymore. Wait, wouldn't they have questioned everyone, including the engineer and his name just now came up? That- there's your suspect. It's like, no duh, go after the guy who made the machine too? Like, why would they only go after Albert, but... Meh. Let me confirm one final point with you, Professor. Do you now consent to the prosecution submitting the necessary paperwork to release your investigation from the protection afforded by the blah blah blah? Yes, please go ahead. I'm very sorry. You should be. <laughs> Let's investigate the machine! It would appear that we shall have to suspend proceedings for the remainder of the day now. Lord Van Zix. My lord. The court has newly made, been made aware of another party whose involvement in, in this matter is critical. Yes, Mr. Drebber. Gather information about the man. If possible, I should have liked him served with a subpoena. With pleasure, my lord. Now, counsel for the defense. Yes, my lord. When we reconvene, I shall be looking for one thing and one thing alone from you evidence that the defendant is innocent of the crime for which he is pre he presently stands accused. I understand. Good. In that case, the court is adjourned until tomorrow morning. We only have one afternoon to examine everything and find new evidence. Yeah, sounds like an Ace Attorney game. Mr. Nadahudu. Ah, yes? I'm... 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 I'm so sorry! I was wrong! You were right! I tricked you! You trusted me! I dragged you into my mess! Oh, how did it ever come to this? I'm so, so, so sorry! Did you really have no idea, Professor? About what Mr. Drubber was really up to, I mean? About what he was really constructing? Naturally! I wish she was the embodiment of my hypothesis of all my hopes and dreams! I have complete faith in it! You never bothered to check on him while he was building it? A dumb idiot. Alright, in that case I won't say any more. Now, sadly the murder accusation against you still stands. So we must do as much investigation as we can before the trial resumes tomorrow. So I'm throwing you back into jail. Well, thank you for doing so much for me. I'm so sorry for arriving late this morning, Mr. Nadahoro. Arriving late? Didn't you receive my postcard? I wanted to let you know when I'd arrive. Postcard? What postcard? I hid it from you, Una, so it would be a surprise. Well, did it work? I was surprised, alright. Especially when she threw me to the ground. Dear, I'm so sorry. I, I was just so happy to see you again that it sort of slipped out. Maybe we could stick to more traditional displays of emotion in the future. Susie's train was late into London, Victoria this morning, you see. We made the coachman really whip the horses hard so she didn't miss the whole trial. Wait, how is she back? How did her dad let her come back? I was watching from the gallery for a while, but in the end, I'm afraid I couldn't contain myself. Well, I'm glad you didn't. Oh. Having you at my side in court gives me the strength I need to win. 
So, I'm, um, delighted to see you back in London. Oh, you're too kind, Mr. Naruhodo. Oh, uh, there was a line of dialogue, but whatever. I hope I can continue to be of service to you. Of course. So, what's brought you back? Did Professor Mikotoba not protest? Let's save all that conversation for when we're back at home, shall we? You know, I've made one of my most special blends ever for this special occasion. Oh, Iris, how wonderful! I can't wait. Susan Susan was back in London. It's hard to describe how happy that made me feel at the time, but despite my elation, our tale was yet about to take yet another extraordinary turn. Wax models. Unless the thing about the wax models ties into the next case. Maybe the wax models don't even show up now. Who knows? Save your current progress. Yes, please. Wax models are scary. They are. They're kind of gross. Investigation part two. Okay. So this is a good place to stop now. So next time I stream, I'll get through the whole investigation. Hopefully it won't be too long. And then I'll finish the trial and then case eight will be done. Can we raid my friend's daring player squad? Yes, we can. Uh, where's the raid button? Where's the raid button? Where's my mouse? Rare channel. Daring player squad is playing Persona 4 Golden. Oh, snap. It looks like they just started. They're in April. So, yeah, it's funny because uh, Mark Zuck's wax model has more emotion than him. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Regal. Oh, my gosh. Okay, yeah, but that's going to be it for me tonight. Um, hopefully, I don't feel sick so that I can stream again on Thursday to do this investigation. We can't top that joke. Ha 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 ha. Oh, that was a good one, Regal. Uh, but yeah, I need to I need to cool off. It's getting hot in my room. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night. And let's go raid peoples. Raid. Oh, I have to wait seven seconds. No. Good night. Sleep tight. Peace out, everyone. Bye-bye.